take a look and use integer chips to explore division of integers. Let's start with a positive expression first. So 12 divided by 4, and look at the math behind that before we go into positive and negative numbers. Let's remember a few pieces and parts of a division expression. First of all, this number here, the 12, is called the dividend. The 4 here is called the divisor. Our dividend tells us how many items we have total that we need to divide up. Our divisor tells us what the group size is going to be. So in other words, I need to make groups that have four positives in each one, and I need to figure out how many groups do I need. Let's take a look at the integer chips for some help modeling this problem. You can see that I've put on the board 12 positive chips. And again, I need to put them into groups of four. So I'm going to make a group of four here, a group of four here, a group of four here, and you can see that I end up with three groups. So 12 divided by 4 is the same as 3. I can put this in symbolic form and check my answer by showing that uh, repeated subtraction. So again, I started with 12 and I took off the first group of 4. That left me with 8. Then I had 8 and I took off another group of 4. That left me with 4. There was my, my other group of 4. Then I have four, and again, I'm going to make one final group of four, and I am left with nothing left over. You can see that I have one, two, three groups. Now let's make this a little trickier. Let's do negative 12 divided by negative four. Right away, I notice that my dividend is negative 12. So I'm envisioning that I'm going to have 12 negative integer chips on the board. I'm going to show you that in just a minute. I want to focus on my divisor here, which is negative 4. So that means that I'm going to be putting into some number of groups four negative chips at a time. Let's show this with the integer chips. So you can see I've got negative 12 on my board, and I'm going to make one group of four negatives right here. You can see that I have three groups. So my answer, or my quotient, to negative 12 divided by negative 4 is positive 3. Again, I can use repeated subtraction to check my thinking. I'm going to start with negative 12, and I'm going to subtract out negative 4. This leaves me with negative 8. There's one group of my negative 4. Then I'm going to start with negative 8. I'm going to subtract out my negative 4, which is going to leave me with negative 4. There's my second group. Then I've got negative 4. I'm going to subtract out my last group of four negatives, and I am left with nothing left over. You can see that I have one, two, three groups of negatives. This is why I get a positive answer. Now let's take a little trickier problem. I have negative 12 divided by 4. Again, if I use my same line of thinking, I have 12 negatives, and I need to make them into groups of four positives. My thinking and my modeling starts to break down just a little bit when I do this. One workaround is I can think of this still as the opposite of. So I can think of it as the opposite of 12 divided by 4 and do it that way. And then I know that positive 12 divided by 4, positive 3, and the opposite of that would be negative 3. This is how I would think about this particular problem. It gets a little trickier when my dividend is positive and my divisor is negative. Let's just talk through that one. Now I have 12 positives total, and I need to make them into groups of four negatives. You can see how the thinking starts to really get tricky here. One workaround for this is if students understand and have modeled with integer chips on multiplication, they can actually tie this to the division. So if they have figured out, and through that repeated reasoning, that you know I can check my division problem by multiplying uh, the quotient by the divisor to get the dividend, so negative 3 times 4 gives me negative 12, I can do it the same way here. So in other words, I'm thinking what number times negative 4 would give me a positive 12. And obviously then I can figure out that if I have negative 3 times negative 4, I get 
positive 12. The main idea is that students are understanding that, again, these multiplication and division of integer rules don't just appear out of nowhere. It's not just something we tell them and they just need to blindly believe it. We want them to be able to understand the math conceptually behind it. Hopefully you've got a better idea of how to explain division with integer chips, and this video was helpful in helping you to come up with some patterns that you're seeing in division of integers.